When hosting and running your own software, the importance of data backup cannot be overstated. Today we explore the crucial aspects of data backup and the often overlooked necessity of testing the restore process. Picture this, months or years of work and all the data stored on your computer or server. Now imagine losing all of that in an instant due to a hardware failure or an unforeseen disaster. What do you do? Luckily you watch some Tech with Marco tutorials and know what to do. By regularly backing up your data, you create a duplicate set of your files stored in a separate location, safe from any potential disasters. In another video I presented my backup strategy for Docker volumes, so make sure to watch it before continuing with this video. I'll link it in the video description down below. Beyond the technical aspects, data backup and restore provide something invaluable, peace of mind. Knowing that your data is safeguarded allows you to operate your Docker containers with confidence. Now let's delve into testing the restore process. It's not enough to create backups. You must ensure that they can be successfully restored when needed. So grab yourself a coffee and take notes. So in my backup video, I created a backup of the Uptime Kuma service with the open source project Docker Volume Backup by Often. Let's create this scenario that everything from our server is gone or the server is completely gone and we only have a blank machine. The first thing you want to do is to download your backup files. So in my case, this is a Nextcloud instance here where I store my backups to. I explained that in the other video. So make sure to download the archive onto your machine. And now let's head over to the console. Move the downloaded archive into your current working directory. And as you already see, it's, it has the ending .gpg at the end. That means that my backup is encrypted. If you don't have your backups encrypted, you can just skip this step here. But um, if you have your backups encrypted, make sure you have gpg on your local machine installed because otherwise you can't unencrypt your backup. So I am unencrypting the backup file into the backup.tar.gz file. I enter my passphrase for that. And now we see that we have a backup.tar.gz file. That's what we want. And now it is time to unzip or untar that file. We do that with tar-c to create a folder in our current working directory from the backup and minus x vf for extract the both and the file backup.tar.gz. And as you see, we have some files extracted here. Let's check and go to backup and the uptime kuma backup folder and we see in those two folders we have our data we want to restore. What we want to do now is uh, to create a local docker volume and I just list my local volumes here so there is no volume available. Now we make use of a docker base image and that one is alpine. And we just start the Docker Alpine container and we create a volume in that with the name uptime-kuma. That is now important that this name has to match your existing volume from your previous Docker Compose file, for example. And in my case, that was uptime-kuma. And as you can see, I type uptime underscore kuma. That's a small mistake I made here. Uh, I'll correct that later in the video but those are the small details you need to uh, pay attention to. After we've created the Docker container here, we see that we have our uptime underscore Kuma volume here and that is empty, so no data to display. And now it's time to fill that volume with our backed up data. And we do that with the command docker cp and we just copy the current working directory with the dot into the container. So that one is called temp restore container. And we use the volume path we created on the top backup underscore restore. And now you can see that we have successfully copied 512 megabytes of data into the container. And let's inspect the uptime Kuma volume again. Uh, we see that we have now files in the volume and that's all we want. So now we can remove our temp restore container because we don't need it anymore. We have successfully created our Docker volume from our backup. Now it's time to use that freshly built volume in our existing Docker Compose file. Um, you can see here that we have 
the driver local specified. We need to change that uh, line into external equals true because the Docker volume now is an external volume. And now I try to start the Docker compose file here, but as you can see, the small mistake I made, it is actually named uptime minus kuma and not uptime underscore kuma. I just realized that mistake uh, right now and fixing that one, but that's life of a software engineer or a DevOps engineer. All those small mistakes uh, can happen all the time and they keep you from being productive, but um, quick fix and let's start the docker compose file. And now it is starting correctly. And now I'm expected to log in with my previous user from my backup and that just works. So I don't have to create a new user here at uptime kuma. That's the standard behavior if you start a freshly new container. And I have all my data of the history of my services I track. Easy as that, you have your backup restored. As I already mentioned, it is quite important to pay attention to all the small details. Um, and the restore process could be quite individually because um, depending on what folders you mount into, what kind of volumes, um, you have to figure that out for yourself. You can leave me a comment if you successfully have restored your data on your local machine, for example, to test the process. That is quite important to do that every now and then to make sure that your backups are still working and in a disaster case that you are able to restore and have all your data back in place. Hey everybody, first of all, thanks for watching this video until the end. This was a very often requested video by you guys, so finally I managed to do it. And if you have any questions left, just leave a comment and I'll try to answer them. And if you haven't done any backups before with my backup strategy, I totally recommend watching my other backup video first and then come back to this video again. So to make sure and check that everything is working. I also put a link in the description down below to the written tutorial so that you can refer to all the written commands and just copy them and uh, adapt them to your setup. So make sure to check that out as well. And now I linked my video for setting up the reverse proxy traffic with Docker. So that could be a use case to implement this whole backup strategy with all the Docker containers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would be more than happy if you do that and give that video a thumbs up. And yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.